Okay. So it's me again. So since I am a mom and I'm also a um, CEO of a new startup and also the pro bono corporate lobbyist for the exploited around the world and all the kids, um, and that also includes here in America, I'm taking these um, this podcast opportunity to talk to people straight out because you just can't do that with the short little t- blurbs on Twitter. Um, but anyways, I want to talk to you about the American healthcare system. And one thing we need to realize, it is a retail-based system. Yeah, it sounds like it's a moral-based system, but it's really retail. Everything is, um, is, you know, you have your different party interests. You have your doctors and your insurance companies, and you have your patients who are the consumers. Yeah, I am. (laughs) And so um, I, I... I came up with the system. If you if you look at manufa- if you look at healthcare as a manufacturing perspective, which is logistics, um, you can't just wish a product into being. It's about product production um, production fees and overhead fees and and all these kind of things. So if you take that manufacturing mindset and you and you apply it to um, our healthcare situation, we will find it as a retail based situation. And if you take the uh, solution that would work in a retail situation, which is incentives or buying incentives, you will find that you can apply that to the current existing system, the American, um, the American Care Act, ACA, or I'm sorry, the Affordable Care Act, ACA, and you can fix the system so you can remove the mandates, you can give the clients exactly what they want, the opportunity to pay for only what they think they need, just by adding another price category. You can keep all this, all the current package deals as they are for the people who currently have existing, pre-existing conditions so that they can choose what package deal they want. But if you add a new price category to the currently existing system that lets people pay for only the services that they think they're going to need as an additional um, package or as a... Um, an a la carte feature. So you would have the catastrophe option where, um, because if you remember, insurance is only a protection of your finances. It does not protect you from getting hurt or it does not protect you from getting sick. So it's only a financial protection so that if you do get hurt and sick, that you do not lose your home and you will not go homeless because of it. It is a financial protection. That is what the insurance company is. And so an insurance plan is like paying for your private lobbyist who's going to come to your to speak for you in regard to your medical bills. That's basically all it is. It's a subscription-based service for a private lobbyist who's going to advocate for your medical bills against these big guys, such as hospitals, so that if they give you a fee and you don't agree with it, you can then go to your insurance company and they say, hey, we've already negotiated this. This is outside of our contract and you need to get rid of that fee because my client is not going to pay for it. That is what health insurance is. And that is all it is. It does not protect anybody from getting sick or injured. And as an American citizen, you should have the right that if you are sick or if you are injured, that you are able... No, I am not looking to repeal it because if you understand, I'm using the ACA system. So if we add a price category to the already existing um, ACA system that is held to government accountability... I want to keep that government accountability. I want a government-based system because if you leave it to corporations, they're going to push off everything and they're going to settle the disputes through um, arbitration. And if anybody's aware of what arbitration is, those kind of legal settlements, it never works out for the people. It's always about corporate interests. So I want to get rid of that whole arbitration loophole that would happen in a corporate-based system, and I want to bring government accountability back to a system where it guarantees that if somebody is sick or injured, that they will be able to have access, quick access, and get better. So we want to keep it a government accountability system. One thing that people didn't realize with the Affordable Care Act, the ACA, is that it got rid of these lines that said miscellaneous. Hospitals could no longer give you a miscellaneous line and not tell you what that fee was for. That was removed under the ACA. 
it had a very specific guideline when it came to medical billing so that they could not hide these costs inside these miscellaneous lines anymore. It also required that the um, insurance companies give you a detailed EOB, um, explanation of benefits, so that you could compare that EOB to the bill that the medical provider provided you. And if there was any discrepancy at all, you were then able to contact your insurance company and they would take care of it for you. I found a lot of times whenever I was pregnant and had medical complications that I was being bypassed. My insurance company was being bypassed and I was getting billed directly. And when I got that EOB or when that EOB did not um, show up, and I was like, wait a minute, what is this bill for? Because I don't see an explanation of benefits that I'm required to have in order to match to that bill. And when I called about it, they said, we never got that claim. And when I called the medical people, they said, oh, well, I'm sorry, it must have got skipped. Yeah, right. You were trying to pull a fast one on me and make me pay for a bill that you did not bother to send to the insurance company because you wanted me to not be that um, aware of what was going on and pay that bill outright. And how many people do that? How many people will get a medical bill and just pay it you know, right out and not compare and see if what they're being charged is what was, you know, what was the negotiated price with that insurance company? Well, why trust a big government over a big corporation? Because our big government is not what is being sold to you as. The federal government is simply a federal guideline that all states are held accountable to follow. And this federal guideline has these people that have been placed in power. Um, the House of Representatives are supposed to represent the district interests of the states. The Senate is supposed to represent the state's interest. And the president is supposed to be the final veto so that the entire United States as a whole is represented by the laws that are being put forward. That is what a big federal government is all about. It has nothing to do with manip uh, manipulating all this power structure so that federal government is making all the rules. The federal government is held accountable by the state governments. Each state government has their own judiciary, um, executive, and legislative departments, and that state government is also held accountable by the county government. So each government system is holding the other one in check. That's what a big government is. It has nothing to do with power consolidation. It is a lie that is being sold to you so that you will destroy the entire checks and balance system that we're supposed to have. So the policy that I have um, created is you'll find it on redesignyourthinking.com or excuse me dot blog dot com will get you there too and it's under the um, unity construct and you'll see it it's called how to logically fix the affordable care act and by adding that price category the catastrophe only a la carte options to pay for only what you think you need this is what's going to end up happening the chain reaction of the participants now this is looking at it from a commerce point of view, a manufacturing point of view, a logistics point of view, and not a politician's point of view. Healthy buyers are attracted to the ACA with the added comfort of being able to customize their benefits. Insurance companies are attracted to use the ACA because the healthy buyers are not only 100% profit, but now additional profit based on how many additional benefits they purchase. Have you ever purchased a car and you've just, you know, you looked at the, here's the car price, but if you want all these fancy bells and whistles, you're going to have to pay more. And the um, car distributor ends up making more money for the excess purchases than they, what they would for the general package. So the insurance company is going to get that 100% profit because a lot of people are not going to need to use that insurance because they're not going to need that financial protection because they're not going to get sick and injured in such a way that it's going to need it. So that becomes 100% profit, but then they have these additional profit options for the insurance company for the extra things that people think they're going to need, and so they're going to buy the XX package, you know, the a la carte options, and that's additional profit off to the 100%. So insurance companies, if they do this with the Affordable Care Act, they will end up making more money in bulk, and that's where that manufacturing logic comes in. You make a product affordable for a customer, you're able to attract more customers to that product and you as that manufacturer end up making more money in bulk than you would if you had an elite clientele. And if you want a good example of what that looks like, the haute couture industry 
Learn that lesson the hard way. The ones who refuse to make products for the lower end customer ended up going bankrupt. You can't compete. So an insurance company, if you make that product available, healthcare, you know, being able to afford to get better if you're sick or injured available to more people, you as an insurance company will end up making more money, 100% profit, plus the additional add-ons under that bulk than trying to manipulate the system and not cover the um, pre-existing conditions. So that's the insurance part of it. Now, the problem with ACA was the insurance companies were making these negotiation deals. So you had like a $90,000 hospital bill. But the insurance company came in and said, okay, that $90,000, my customer is only going to pay $24,000 up front. You know, that was pre-negotiated. In order to use us, that's what has to happen. And so that 90000 you know, the, the makeup, the difference between the 24000 and the 90000 well, that hospital has to eat. And that's why doctors were not willing to cover to take the insurance companies because the negotiation between the medical providers and the insurance companies were so unfair. But under this change... The medical providers and facilities will have more leverage in negotiation of contract costs. Why? Because now the insurance companies want the client to be able to use their policy. Remember, 100% profit plus an additional profit, that's a big profit margin for those insurance companies. They're going to go out of their way to make sure that medical provider and that hospital provider takes that insurance. You see how that works? So, um... Then with that, with the 80-20 profit rule, so a lot of people weren't aware of this because it wasn't being followed. In fact, Congress um, in, in, uh, exploited it. Um, at the time the ACA was going on, the insurance companies were, were producing high yields. They were, they were showing very high figures on their quarterly reports to their investors. And this was not being brought forward, the idea that these high yields were happening, and instead they were going to the regulators claiming that the cost to provide for this new policy, this ACA, was costing them more than what they, you know, the 80-20 rule. If that was the case, they would not be presenting high yields. So again, it's a math problem. If you're spending greater than 100%, as they claimed, it would have a negative, not a you know, a high yield. And I'll, I'll answer that after. Um, so 80-20 profit rules was in place. 80% was supposed to go towards medical research, development, supplies, and only 20% on the insurance company's profit margins. That was a big part of the ACA policy, the government regulated policy said insurance companies. 80% of those premium costs have to be towards the actual medical care of development, research, supplies, you know, the actual care. And you're only allowed to have 20% profit. But they manipulated that system and they claimed that they're, to the regulators, they had to increase the premiums because they were um, spending more under this system than what was being covered. And that was a lie because if you saw the quarterly reports, they were producing very high yields. Um... So the insurance companies will have, then have the incentive to use their corporate lawyers against any investor who tries to cut into those profit margins, which obscene drug hike prices. So now you have the insurance companies who want to use it. You have the medical providers who have a better um, contract leverage. Now, if the... Um, if the, the drug companies, Big Pharma, tries to come in and jack up the, um, the price of the supplies, it's going to be cutting into the available 20% margin. If you have that 80-20, that's going to be affecting their margin of the insurance companies. So now you've got them interfering with their corporate lawyers going after the big pharma co corporate lawyers. You have big money battling uh, big money. You don't have to worry about any kind of moral argument anymore. You're going to have the big money trying to fight for, you know, as much money as they can get out of it. Um, and big money fighting big money is much better odds than any morality argument can produce. Because remember, morality arguments, you end up saying, oh, well, it's all for the good of the organization. It's all, good, all for the good of the company. The sacrifice of a few is good for everybody else. And then the natural competition of the consumers using the marketplace, the ACA as that free market marketplace, 
that's covered by the government, the accountability of a government, will actually lower the prices since all the other costs have been addressed. You've addressed the supply costs, the overhead costs, the production costs, the, the, premium, the um, profit margins, the upkeeps, the, the price hikes, the price gouging. You've, you've addressed all of that under a government accountability plan, not a corporate-based plan, but a free market plan that is covered by the government, that, is, that is over, has that government oversight and these rules. Um, so the natural competition of the consumers using the marketplace will actually lower the prices since all the other costs have been addressed. And if the raw material costs of number one through four, the things that I talked about on this list are left untouched, this marketplace price competition will result in competing companies being slightly less, um, than each other's overall costs rose. And that's where you get that price setting where the insurance companies come together and they decide that they're going to set everything at this certain level. And so they only have to be slightly less than each other, but it's still very high for the average consumer to be able to afford. That's your price setting. Um, and you can have these insurance companies who will try to undersell and drive their competition out. And then once that is out, you know, once you have limited access to that, then they'll come in and they'll jack up the prices. That's price gouging. A government-based system is going to eliminate the price gouging, the price setting, the monopolies that end up hurting the clients and the consumers and making a product even more expensive in the long run than if you had a system that was more affordable to all. And then once everyone is using the same system, because that's the key, you have to get everybody into the same marketplace system. The idea of universal health care becomes more feasible without shocking the system. It is a retail-based system. If you try to turn it into some kind of socialist system right now, it's going to destroy it. You have to get everybody into a marketplace. You have to get everybody using that marketplace. You have to have government accountability of that so that the corporations do not have way too much control, especially the insurance companies, so you don't have pencil pushers with zero medical experience saying to your specialists and your surgeons and your doctors who have years and years and years of experience saying that this procedure cannot happen that's necessary for the life saving of a client because it's too expensive and the insurance company won't cover it. Meaning that if that person wants to have it to save their life, they're now on the hook to cover it because if it's not covered under that um, under the policy, it does not go into your, um, oh shoot, what's that called? Just had it in my head. Um, Sarsity, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't go into um, the money that you pay into, you have to pay into a certain amount before, you know, the, the plan is supposed to cover everything else. It doesn't cover that. And so it would be strictly out of pocket and it doesn't go to your, towards your deductible. So anything that, no, the deductible. So anything that the insurance company refuses to pay for and you need and you do it out of pocket, that out of pocket does not go into your deductible. It is strictly out of your pocket and you're still on the hook to pay for that deductible. I bet a lot of people do not realize that. That's why you don't want insurance companies to have that much power over your health because they will determine your health based on a price tag and not the experience of medical doctors who understand the human body far more than a pencil pusher who works for an insurance company. So once you have everyone on that same system, you can look at universal health care becomes more feasible and such a move would require uniform cooperation so everyone is using a localized source such as the ACA marketplace and that's a positive step into reality. So there's a lot going on with that um, ACA and what we call Obamacare that people were not willing to even look at because they wanted to get rid of that system because it affects big pharma and it affects the insurance companies who are paying for the, the, the seats, the election seats of the people in Congress who are buying their seats. And so you had these corporate interests who have bought Congress, who are getting Congress to get rid of these bills that are supposed to be really good for the people because it's going to make healthcare affordable for all, if we add that extra price category that's catastrophe only, and then if you want extra, you pay for it a la carte, 
as a price category for the healthy buyers. Because if you have more healthy buyers paying into a system, but they're not needing to use the system, they're just using it so that they protect their finances and you have it at a low cost, you will end up creating more profit for that insurance company than if you limited access to, to it. Well, big pharma lobbyists is a, is a reality right now. And until we get rid of that coach network that's completely corrupted our, our Congress and our entire U.S. government, it's a thing we have to address. So we're going to have to have the big pharma lobbyists go at the big insurance lobbyists and then let them fight it out with the insurance, um, the investors, and, and let them just kind of consume each other. And, and you know, through that consumption, that art, that fighting big money fighting big money and everybody trying to get theirs, but you make sure that it's got more leverage for the doctors and the people actually doing the service. And the, you're going to find that in that reciprocation of um, fighting, no more, more arguments, no more trying to say, you know, you have to care about the people because they don't, you know, let's just, let's not, let's stop pretending. They don't, they only care about the profit margins. So you give them an opportunity to have high profit margins and they will go to bat to make sure that they secure those profit margins. As long as you keep that 80, 20 rule intact, 80% of the costs have to go towards the actual cost of medical research, you know, development, healthcare, and only 20% can go to profit margins. You have to have that set so that, um, you know, it will affect their costs if they don't go up to bat against the big pharma and the investors who try to hike up drug prices. So you keep that rule in place. You make sure that they can only gain so much profit off of something, and then you're going to find a better system because everybody's gonna have a lot more leverage, and that natural competition, a price competition will actually happen. If you don't have that, and you give insurance companies way too much leverage, and you give investors way too much leverage, you're going to find a system that is not built about taking care of the people. and. We can go back and look at dark ages of Europe or, or renaissance of Europe and see if we don't take care of the medical needs or even right now with our pandemic, if we don't take care of the medical needs of people, they morph, whatever those viruses are, whatever those ailments are can morph into superbugs. And then they stop working with our antibiotics and then they stop working with the scientific stuff that we are currently have in existence. And then we have a situation where we do have pandemics. If we don't take care of the sickness, it's going to affect everybody. So we can't just ignore science. We can't ignore sickness and say, well, it's politics. It's not. Sickness, viruses, bacteria, all of that kind of stuff is hosts, invading bodies. And so... We can't ignore it. We have to take care of it. We have to make sure people can afford to, to have protection of their finances. Otherwise, we're going to have homeless people. And then that's going to increase, um, you know, hygiene problems. It's going to increase the bacterial issues. And that's going to add more toxicity and an environment of, you know, bacteria is going to increase more disease. If we don't take care of this, it's going to affect all of us because science is going to end up coming in to the equation and, you know, hygiene and, and all that kind of stuff. We don't take care of the people. It ends up affecting the entire government, the entire community, the entire nation. It's just how it works. And we can see these kind of things if we look at history at places that don't have even current um, current events, you know, places that don't have access to vaccines, places that don't have access to these things that we're so used to here. We can look at those countries and see what kind of system we're looking at. If we decide that healthcare is going to be only based on an investor's portfolio margin and not getting people access to getting good, um, better, if they get sick and injured as soon as possible, because that's the goal. We want to make sure that if somebody gets sick or someone is injured, they are able to get better as soon as possible. That's the HIPAA. That's the whole point of, you know, that's why people become these doctors. And that's the whole HIPAA act. They want to make sure that those patients get treated and out of there as soon as possible. The goal is getting the body back to 100% or as close to possible, <laughs> you know. And I'll tell you, if you are in pain, you're not going to care about a price tag. If your life is in jeopardy and you're on that operating table and you, you know you can barely breathe, you're not gonna care about a price tag. You're not gonna ask for a price list. You're gonna be like, just make me better. And then the situation happens where the, the, the bills come in, you can't pay for them, you've got 
collection agencies after you. You're losing your job. You're losing your home. And before you know it, you're homeless. One of the biggest causes of homelessness is medical bills. People that come into medical crises and they can't get out from that that barrage of just bills, 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 bills. And every time you see a specialist come in, somebody pokes their head into your um, room, it's like $500 you have to pay them. Every single specialist that pokes your head in, in your hospital room, you're paying them. Every check-in, you're paying them. Every, every um, Tylenol that they're giving you, you're paying them. So we need to look at healthcare as a retail system. We need to look at it as a manufacturing construct of production costs and supply costs and resource and available resources and how we can get people better as quick as possible so we avoid a fallout that will happen if we ignore it with homelessness, hygiene, and increased diseases.